Okay, we've got this um, ESP32 S3 Box 3B, which is um, a version of popular S3 Box. It's like it got a display and it's got a little case and it's got a uh, thingy it plugs into. Um, this is just a lower cost version that doesn't come with sensors. Uh, so we have a slightly more expensive one that comes with sensors and this one still has the, the box, ESP32 S3 Box and the stand, but doesn't have the extra sensors. Sign up, we'll have it in stock soon. We also have coming soon two versions of our Itsy Bitsy ESP32. Uh, we've designed this many, many years ago, but during the part shortage, we weren't able to get it out the door. But now it's uh, it, it's, it lives again, clearing out my, my long to-do list. So this is an Itsy Bitsy sized board. So it's got um, 20 GPIO and power pins, um, micro USB, because I want it to be compatible with the other Itsy Bitsy boards. In case you have an enclosure, uh, you can swap out whichever one you want. I don't want to have... Uh, maybe I'll make a version with USB-C later. Um, on the bottom, it has a USB-C, uh, USB to serial converter chip um, and uh, some markings and uh, alternate battery input if desired. We also have a version with a WFL connector designed by Hiroshi, by the way, in case you're wondering. There's a Stemma QT port on the top, um, NeoPixel on both of them, um, user button, reset button, and then auto reset circuitry. Uh, this is really great for very small IoT projects that need ESP32, which has Wi-Fi, Bluetooth Classic, Bluetooth Low Energy. We support it in uh, CircuitPython, has great Arduino support. It's also MicroPython support and a lot of other chips as well. The ESP32 is like a very standardized uh, chip. What's really nice about this board is it's got um, very, very good low power uh, capability. I just tested it before the show. 10 microamps in deep sleep, which is like incredibly low. Um, it's as low as the ESP32 can get. Um, so by uh, kind of designing this in a nice way, using a good regulator on it, um, you could definitely use this for very low power IoT projects or any project where you just need uh, more pins than a cutie pie, but you don't need as many as a feather. And there's also one pin that's shifted up to five volts. So great for NeoPixel projects. All right. And then uh, this is right. The, yeah. yeah and so the bottom is the same. Just this one has a WFL yeah. connector. Except okay. Next up. Uh, this is not 100 bags, but this product is for 100 bags. Uh, we've been using a heat sealer to ship products because they're less likely to accidentally open. Um, they're sealed, they're faster, they get auto barcoded. We love our heat sealer, but we still have a lot of these bags left over because we had to buy a lot of them a couple of years ago. Uh, and we still use them for some products, but uh, we still have a lot and uh, we would like to sell them to you because some people want them. So if you would like 100 of these adorable two by three inch approximately zip top anti-static bags you can now pick them up at packs of 100 for a couple bucks a piece it's a really good deal help us clear out our inventory and uh, you can reuse them as many times as you like um great for storing little electronic parts i'll say i store my prototypes in these little bags okay next up um next up there's a revision for the flora neopixels sheet so for a very long time we were using the ws 2811 s uh, which is the first version of the all-in-one neopixel led um and what's cool about that chip is it can handle up to nine volt dc power but uh that chip is pretty much discontinued so now we've uh changed up for the sk6812 which is um you know our standard uh, NeoPixel compatible LED. Um, you know, this is the same size, same pinout, same shape, same everything. The only difference is you can no longer use it with voltages above 5.7, 5.5 volts. So sorry if you were happening to power your projects from six to nine volts, you can't do that anymore without a regulator or a buck converter. Um, but uh, in exchange, because I'm not no longer using a chip that I have to, a LED chip I have to chase after, the price is lower. So I'll uh, drop the price. Um, this is a great deal if you want to have little sewable LEDs. Get them in a sheet, just pop them out and trim them yourself. Okay, and then next up, the start of the trip besides you, lady, our team, our staff, and everybody makes the thing go is... Yay, it's the Neo RGB Stemma board. Uh, this is a board I designed for myself because I was so tired of wiring up analog RGB LED strips with transistors and, um, you know, resistors and power connectors and like whatever, whatever. I want to make it really easy to control analog LED strips. That's LED strips that don't have NeoPixels in them. A lot of them use five, uh, uh, sorry, they use 12 volts um, or even higher, but 12 volts is the most popular. Um, and so now I have a board where you have NeoPixel signal in, 
like your standard NeoPixel that comes from any microcontroller or even a Raspberry Pi these days. And on the output, you have three common anode uh, RGB channels uh, plus power and ground. You connect to the terminal block and it acts like a single, very, very bright, very large NeoPixel. You can also use this with anytime you have like an LED array that has PWMable, PWMable inputs. This will basically do the PWMable control, eight bits per channel, 24 bits total. And then you just treat it like a NeoPixel. So, you know, again, wonderful if you um, have analog neon or LED strip or something you're, you know, for some reason you want to, uh, you know, they're definitely for, for long extends, extensions, uh, they're cheaper than using NeoPixels. And you don't have individual LED control within the strip, but maybe you don't need that. Maybe you want to like do a single color for the entire thing. So uh, I have a demo on overhead. So this is my standard at Mega 328 Metro, Arduino compatible, and I'm powering it from uh, nine volt here. So this is nine volt power. I connect the red wire uh, to the Stemma board from VN, so it's nine volts, ground to ground, and then the NeoPixel signal, it thinks it's connected to a single NeoPixel, pin six. Um, this is a bright power LED telling you that the power is good. You can barely see it because it's only one LED, but there is a little bit of blinking going on on the uh, signal red LED over here. And then you just use the terminal screw block to connect red, green, blue, and then this black wire is VN, so it's the 12 volt power. Um, and then this just acts like a NeoPixel, it's doing the NeoPixel swirl. So um, it's great because this can handle three amps per channel up to 16 volts. So if you have like a gigantic star RGB LED, or again, like you have a gigantic plate or analog LED strips, and you don't have to be RGB LED strips. If you have white, like, na you know, not, uh, cool, warm, or natural white. Or sometimes there's um, LED strips that are analog that have uh, color mixing. So you can have, you can change from cool to warm to neutral white. You could basically have this act as if it was a NeoPixel and again, make it a lot easier to control. Um, if you're using more than two amps total, uh, recommend not going through the JST PH, just go through the terminal block. So you, you just power it directly from the, uh, the terminal block here. And uh, you can control, again, you know, nine amps total between all three channels. One thing I will mention is that if you're using RGBW LED strip, this only supports three channels. I haven't quite found a chip that supports four channels yet that is NeoPixel compatible. So you have a choice of either just controlling three of the channels or there is, um, you know, an output pin here. If you want to chain, you could connect uh, the fourth channel on a second one of these and then just control it as if it was the second NeoPixel afterwards. You have to do the, the logic for it. You can you treat it as two NeoPixels. The first one is RGB and the second one is just W. Um, but I'll let, you know, or sometimes, again, some strips have five channels. Again, you'd use two of these, uh, one for each set of three. So I think this will make wiring a lot easier for people. Definitely make my demos a lot faster. So uh, hopefully folks enjoy it. I know Erin, who does a lot of NeoPixel projects has already been excited. She's like, yay, I can't wait to use this to already simplify some wiring on a project I did for uh, a Tiki bar. And that's new products. New, 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 new,